everybody, welcome back to Fix Everything. Today we're outside. This is the air conditioning unit. This happens to be a Ream Classic. It was installed about 22 years ago, and I have done nothing with this thing. And I noticed that in January, when it was 15 degrees out, I was listening to a buzzing noise, and I said, where is that coming from? Sure enough, it was coming from this unit, so it's either a bad capacitor or the contactor that's in there. There's very few parts in here, but we're going to open this up and uh, we're going to take a look at what's going on. But for now, the first thing I want to do is clean the coil that is in there. So obviously everyone has a big fan and around the outside underneath here, there's a coil that wraps itself all the way around, kind of like you'd see on an outside of an air conditioner with those fins. And I was in here yesterday and I have to tell you, I lifted a blanket of debris off of those coils all the way around the perimeter. It was nasty. So I took a vacuum and I sucked all that garbage off of there, but the fins themselves are still filthy. So I'm going to spray a special cleaner on there and we are gonna hose it down and make them nice and clean so that the air can circulate and this works a whole lot less and keeps the house a lot cooler. Before you do anything, somewhere nearby, there's a disconnect box. This one happens to be on the outside of the house here. I'm just gonna lift this door. And inside here, there is a connector. You're just gonna pull that out. That disconnects the, the power. And then close this, just in case we get some water overspray. You don't want water to get in there. But we're gonna take this apart. This has several screws. I've already removed two. You may have a different setup, but there's a lot of screws. You just need to look for all of them before this outside housing is going to come off. So two top screws. That actually opens the control panel. There's the contactor. Here's the compressor. And right in there, you can actually see. And right in here, you can see the coil. See, they're like fins. Just like the outside of an air conditioner. You've got to be careful, though, because these bend very very easily here's a part where it got smashed in there and I'll try to straighten those with a brush later but this was caked all the way down and you can still see some dirt down near the bottom there and all the way around I'm going to remove this so you can see but here's the compressor here's all the lines this is where all the freon flows through power connectors there we have a capacitor which is that uh, it's got a brown wire, two orange wires, and a purple wire on it. That's the contactor. It's like a basically a power block. I'm replacing both. I'm not sure which one is bad. I'm guessing it's the contactor, but this hasn't been serviced in 22 years, so I'm actually replacing both. I have parts arriving later today. But before we do that, we're going to clean these fins, and then we'll get into replacing the contactor and the capacitor in there so you want to inspect the inside of the housing here this was full of leaves I cleaned it out somewhat so it looks a whole lot better uh, there should be some openings at the bottom and there are there's holes down there to weep the water away into the ground you don't want any sitting water in there because that's what causes rust you can see some rust here things are you know starting to rust up a little bit it's been out here for a long time so to clean these coils we're going to use something like this this is Pura Filter 2000 Coil Cleaner. Now, I'm not endorsing them in any way. I just happened to swing into Lowe's on the way home from work today. And I said, what do you got for coil cleaner? And sure enough, they had some. It's about 9 bucks for the can. It's foaming, so you're going to shake this up real, real good. And we're going to cover this whole surface and let that work for about 15 minutes before we get our garden hose and spray it out. So let's get to it. This particular unit has lots of screws. Screw, 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 screw. There are three on the bottom that I already removed. So you want to get your drill out and socket on the end. There's three more here. One, two, three. There were two more down there. And there's three more down at the base under here. So you want to make sure you get them all. There's three more at the top here. Actually, there was four. So before we start, you need a drill or a hand driver of some kind. This happens to have a quarter inch bit on the end, and that's the size of these screws. I also have my stiff bristle brush. This is going to be handy in straightening out any bent fins 
when we get in there and there's probably a couple in there so the more efficient this runs the more energy you'll save and the cooler your house will be so let's get to it now that i have all the screws removed this moves freely so this whole thing is just one big loose piece of metal so in order to get these fins really clean we now have to take the actual fan panel off there were two screws here and there were also two screws one here and one here for a total of four so this whole thing is going to come up and out but before we can do that we don't want to torque in any of these wires so we have one two three black brown and orange we're going to follow those into the power box and we're going to remove those so that we can take them out so they don't get torn as we lift this panel out i've got the wires disconnected they're right here in my hand and i'm just going to push them through into the cage Make sure that they clear this opening and we don't tear anything at all when we take this fan panel out. Easy peasy, no soldering. They're all nice and clipped, very easy to go back. So now those have cleared. I can't really shoot this and lift this whole thing at the same time, but you get the idea. You're gonna now pull this whole fan panel right out and put it in a safe place. Just be careful when you do that there's blades in there. They're pretty thin. They're made of aluminum. You do not want to torque on this or catch a blade and bend it because then you're going to get a lot of vibration because it will be off balance. So just be careful taking it out. Holy cow, my fan blade is missing. No, nope, it's not missing. It's right over there. It'd be a good time to wipe the interior of that, which I just did with a rag. Just make sure that the vents are clean. Fan blades look good. Don't press too hard on these fan blades. Because they're, again, they're made of <laughs> almost paper. You want to make sure that stays nice and balanced the whole time. So wipe it down, clean any debris out of there, and then we can get to the coils. Now that the fan is out of there, this is a great time to clean the interior. All kinds of junk, mulch, leaves, whatever's in there. Clean that out, make it nice and pretty. There we go. That's a little more acceptable. Not perfect, but once I'm done here, I'll spray that out and get the last remaining dirt out. So now it's time to remove... The outside housing, you're just going to go and pull it starting from this panel right here. You're going to pull that way because there's nothing on this side to stop it other than the two screws that were up front. So make sure you remove those or this won't come off. You'll feel it and you'll go, oh yeah, that's ready to come off of there. Wow, totally naked. So way over there is the housing. Took that right off. And now we just want to clean these fins all the way around. You should have seen it yesterday. Holy cow. You can actually still see some of it there. And there are some bent fins here and there. That's when our brush will come into play. We're gonna just run those. Once this is clean, we're gonna run those up the same uh, way that these fins go and hopefully we can straighten those out. I gotta tell you, a dead hydrangea bush or one that's not bloomed yet works great for just holding on to all your crap. Now take your coil cleaner, shake it up real good, and just follow the directions on the can. What we're going to do today is we're going to spray this uh, on the inside and let it penetrate through to the outside. And then when we wait about 10 or 15 minutes for this to be done working, we're then going to take the garden hose and spray from the inside out. We want to push all that dirt to the outside. We don't want any more junk on the inside, and that will make it nice and clean. kind of expected it to foam up a little bit more maybe it's just kind of waiting to activate it is foaming a little bit but I'm sure it's gonna do its job Make sure you get up under that lip nice and even try to get everything saturated Especially near the bottom, it really, the dirt was caked on there. I can see daylight through these, so they're actually not too bad. A lot better than I thought. If you can shine a flashlight on one side and not see it, 
you know those fins are dirty. Now I got about a half a can left, so um, I'm going to do the outside as well. Why not? But again, I'm going to spray from the inside out. And that's all she wrote. Empty can. Now we're just going to let that set up for about 5 or 10 minutes and then we're going to come and hose her down. While that is penetrating and cleaning those fins, I'm going to take this apart. We're going to take the coil out of here. Call me paranoid, but I am. Just going to use my pliers and take this out. And then we're going to just take the rest of these wires off. Take some good pictures so you know where they are. Contactor has two large screws on this unit, one here and one over here. They're silver in color, and both of those come off, and this whole piece is just going to lift right out of the housing. And that's it. That's the piece. Don't forget to take that orange jumper wire off because it does serve a purpose. I'm going to put both of those parts aside. When the new ones come, we'll put it right back in. So it's been about 15 minutes. So let's hose this baby down. Try to turn on your hose as full as you can get it. Do not use a power washer because that can absolutely damage these fins. And you don't want that. Even the most gentle power washer can screw this up very badly. And you do not want that. That The cost of that is uh, you might as well chuck it because then you're going to have to uh, compress the system all new Freon, get a guy out here that has a license to handle those kind of materials. So trust me, just use a garden hose. Ew. Very satisfying. So if you're spraying on the outside, try to spray down to get some of the debris out rather than push it back in and if you have to you can go back in and spray out again until you finally get a nice clean rinse Okay, wow, way, way better. It's not gonna look perfect, but boy, those fins, you can actually see through them, and that is a good thing. So the airflow will be great, and you'll have a much more efficient unit. So now we're gonna take our brush, and if you look, you can probably see, like there's a bent fin there. We're gonna try to just take our brush and try to straighten that. It's just a stiff, bristle brush in there yeah or you could even take your fingernail if it's just one or two fins and straighten those out here's a nice dent right there Let's see if we can't get something going there see that look at that straightens it right out 
try to hit all of them you know if you got a few little dings here and there it's not going to be a big deal but you want to try to get as much airflow as you can through these fins And there you have it, a nice, clean condenser unit. Wow, that's going to be able to breathe, and the house is going to run much cooler, and I will spend less money on electricity. Wow, that's so much quieter. So much quieter. Because the airflow is a lot better. I'm going to just let this run for just a few minutes, blow all the air out of the fins. That's fantastic. So for about 30 bucks worth of parts, uh, it's working like a charm. Yeah, fans blowing the right way. That's a good sign. Well, thanks so much again for tuning in to fix everything. I hope this helps you in some way. Clean that coil. Thanks for tuning in again, and have a great day.